whose heart in doing good for in due time will reap if we do not grow weary. And I understand it. It's easy to get weary. It's, hey, I don't know anyone that, that hasn't gotten tired quoting scriptures over and over. Raising my hand. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Binding the devil. But you've got to do this every day. I mean, you've got to do this every day. Stay on Matthew 18, 18. I talk to the devil every day. Yeah. Every day. And I, I'm not saying that, like, look at me or, you know, uh-uh. I've got to do it to, to survive. Yeah. I tell him, no. Ha, huh, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I have authority over you and I bind you. This is spiritual warfare. This is how we fight the devil. And I'm telling you, I understand it gets tiring. Saying the same scriptures, quoting with the devil every day. This is how Jesus ran the devil off. This is how we do it. This is how we do it every day. I bind you, you liar. Jesus has given me authority. And I bind you. you got to stay away from my family, my finances, my job. In the name of Jesus and the authority of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. See, we've got three weapons in our toolbox. All three of these things. I bind you. You back off. Yeah. And you'll go a day and he's not backing off. And you're a little tired. And you go a week and he still hasn't backed off. And you go a month. Isn't that fun? No. No, it's not fun. It's easy to get weary and well doing. But we gotta do it. We, we, we gotta, you gotta keep doing it. With that eager incisiveness. You tell them, uh uh, you back off. You can't have me, you can't have my family. And when everything around you looks as bleak as it could possibly be, you gotta stand up and keep talking to them. You gotta stand up and keep saying, no! You can't have it in the name of Jesus, in the authority of the Word of God. Amen. I have been given the authority to bind you, and I'm telling you now, in the name of Jesus, stop. Stop. And you just keep doing it. And when it looks like he's not stopping and the situation hasn't changed, you don't stop. You, you got to keep doing this. And I, hey, I, I'm, not, I'm saying this because I, I, I live through this too. It's easy to get weary. It's easy to, to, to slack off. It's easy to be like, oh, I read these scriptures every day. I mean, come on. God, are you there? When we start that wondering stuff, that's why we got to keep our faith built up all the time. All the time. you got to keep it built up all the time. Because God's, God's going to move you from where you are into where he wants you. The thing that he's placed in your heart, that's not there by accident. That's there because God put it there. He's going to move you into that place. But you got to take it. Luke says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and violent men take it by force. We've got to be violent with this stuff. That's Josh. He's a violent man right there. You can't back off because the devil's not going to back off. He's not going to. That's why it, Galatians really clearly tells us you, you'll reap if you don't grow weary because what happens when you get weary? You get tired, you get weary, you stop. And it's easy to stop. It's so easy. It happens in small daily increments. We don't spend quite as much time today praying in the Spirit because i got so many other things to do. And I don't spend quite as much time walking around telling the devil to back off and I bind you in the name of Jesus because we got so much other stuff to do and so much stuff crowding in our mind. And it's easy. And I'm just here to encourage you. Stay diligent. Amen. It's the diligent hand that's going to make rich. Amen. It's the hand of the diligent. Amen. See, a man that is diligent in his work, he'll stand before kings. If we got stuff we got to do, but we have to do stuff. Amen. And I'm going to read. I'm going to read a scripture, a story from the Old Testament. That's a story I love, and I'm sure you've heard it or heard parts of it preached. And I'm going to. I'm going to read the story as an illustration to some of this, just because I love the story so much. And Pastor, let me preach tonight, <laughs> so you're going to hear the story. <laughs> but I want to. I, I want to emphasize something actually before we do that. Excuse me, Pat. No, I'm going to scrap. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I want you to know that I do understand how difficult it is. And I'm not saying this like I've arrived or I'm, in the, I'm where I need to be and God's done with me and I might as well just go home. I mean, please, I'm not, you know, I'm not, it's not something. I'm not pretending it's something it's not. You know, tomorrow I, I pray that I'm better than I am today. And I know that I'm better than I was last week. Thank you, Jesus. That should be our goal. Thank you, God. I want to be better. I want to hear your voice more clearly. I want to do the right things. I want to have more power. I want to exercise my authority more clearly. And I, and I want to. But I understand what it's like going through stuff and feeling like, are we, are we, ever, are we ever going to get out of this? And I know, I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell this story real quick. Well, it may not be quick. I've got a few minutes. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this. I didn't rehearse this, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. I think it's going to bless someone. Some of you may know, some of you may not know, um, this past year, uh, I partnered up with a gentleman and started a furniture company, which has been a desire of mine. I mean, I, I love furniture. Specifically, I love upholstered furniture. I love fabrics. Oh, I get it from my mom. We just love, I love fabrics. I love the texture. I love the feel. Vibrant colors. And I love nice upholstered goods. I love sitting on a sofa and sinking into it. Oh, it's just... And I've been in the industry all my life. And in 2007, Regina and I had been married a year. Right around a year, and she just started this internet company, and I had a job with a furniture company down in Cyber City, and in 2007, Thanksgiving, I'd been there five, six years, seven years, however long it was, I'm not real sure, the owner of the company called me in and said, hey, Greg, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but he always called me babe. I loved it. <laughs> and he's one of these guys who was like... You know, Jerry, 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 or who am I thinking? Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. He called him like a rat pack. Yeah. And it's not like he was crazy cool, just his persona was very 60s. You know, I mean, the way he dressed, his hair was parted clean on the side. I mean, just you know, he just looked like something out of the 60s. He never changed. But he called me into his office. There was a small company I was working for. Him, one of his sons, a guy in the computer room. Three women in the office and 66 guys in the factory making furniture. And he called me into his office and said, hey, babe, I don't know how to tell you this, but um, his hand was shaking. He was holding a piece of paper. He said, I may not make it. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do or deal anymore. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to let you go. And I was way overpaid. <laughs> you know, not really, but it was... It was decent money I was making. And I felt terrible for him. But man, I felt worse for myself. I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I hate it that this is happening. China was crushing us. That was when China was bringing in goods. It's even out more now. But man, China was wreaking havoc in the furniture industry in the early 2000s. And it caught up to us. So I called Regina and said, hey, I need you to come get me. And she needed to come get me because we only had one working car. We had, we've been fighting battles ever since day one, haven't we, babe? <laughs> That's okay. I'll tell you what. I say this to the teens all the time. Nothing will grow your faith like living by faith. I'm telling you. No, when you've got to believe God, nothing grows your faith better. Not that you'd ever want to go through it. Who wants to go through that stuff? But I'll tell you what, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, haven't, you haven't had to live by faith. Yeah. It, you, you can understand it conceptually. Mm -hmm. And there were years I was making a lot of money. A lot of money. More money than doctors make sometimes. And if you'd asked me, I would have said, I live by faith. Look at what God's doing. And I didn't. I, I, I had faith. I had faith in my ability. I did. At the time, I didn't think so. I thought I had faith in God. Then all of a sudden... That gets pulled out from under you and you realize, oh, oh I, don't, I don't know how to trust God. 
Now, I was always obedient in my giving. As always, you know, I'm not saying I miss God, but I, I thought that I trusted God and I didn't. So when, when I get let go from this company, Regina says to me, I call her and said, well, you need to come pick me up. And she said, oh, are you done early? And I said, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. They let me go. They laid me off. She's like, oh, my God, that's an answer to prayer. <laughs> she just got saved, just got filled with the Spirit, you know. I said, well, sweetie, I, I don't think it is. <laughs> I don't think that that's an answer to prayer. And she said, I was just praying because she wanted me to come help her build this company. And I said, sweetheart, you know, that will never replace this income. I mean, it just it's not going to. If you work hard and I work hard and we stay at it, we'll be able to... And I said, tell you what, here's what I'll do. Until I get into that job, I'll come work, I'll come work your company with you. And I sell on advertising for a company. And I had interviews, and I had there was one huge company. I had three or four interviews with them, and I knew the job was mine. Vice president of merchandising. It was, it was made for me that job. I got to play, I'd be playing with fabrics all the time. Telling people what to do and how to do it. I mean, just, you know, just it would have been perfect. Then all of a sudden one day they didn't call back. That turned into a couple weeks which turned into a month. And so I got some dealers out there, and I'm telling you, the industry dried up. So I decided, I'm putting my hand to this. There's nothing else going on. We're gonna, we're gonna sell some advertising because we gotta eat. And we worked diligently. Amen. Years. And it's a struggle from day one. Mm -hmm. And it never replaced that income. It didn't come close. Now, this is, it's like family night tonight, okay? Yeah. This is real personal stuff. Yeah. Amen. And I bet there were over three years, four years, that there was not one month that there was enough money for that month. I know what it's like. I know what it's like being behind in rent. I know what it's like when Thursday's coming and the electric company's not going to extend you any more days to pay your bill. And Thursday's coming and the power's getting shut off. And I'm quoting my scriptures every day. And I'm not saying that's perfect and I did everything right. I'm not, I'm not, but I'll tell you what, I never let this slip. God, I thank you that you prosper the work of my hands. I thank you, God. I think you put this opportunity in front of me. And every day I'm going out. And early on, Gene was going out too. But little Miss Katie came along and she didn't go out as much. Back and so we're just. What's that? Being back to one car. You're right, being back to one yeah. car. And yeah, I'll, I, we're not going into everything, but it was. Dear Lord. I know what it's like feeling like we got to eat today. And I've got to pay rent and the electric bill. And I've got a quarter tank of gas in my car. And I've got to go out and get a check today. Today I've got to get a check. Today, today I've got to get a check. And you go out and you talk to these people and business is terrible everywhere and they're saying, Greg, I've I got to pay my electric bill. I, I, I'm not buying the advertising right now. And so you get home not feeling like the king of the world that you want to feel like as a man, right? And now you're at home and you're saying, Father God, I thank you. God, I thank you for taking care of me and my family. I thank you. And dinner's cooked. Regina's done something and she's got food on the table. I'm thank God for this woman. I mean, I'm, she had my back. Never doubted, never questioned. Amen. Tell me I'm the greatest salesman in the world. We'd go weeks I couldn't sell anything. Come on. And all of a sudden, you know, you get a week and you almost get caught up and it feels like, woohoo! And then you look at the final numbers and you're like, yeah, I'm still so far behind. But I, I'm telling you what, I'm not, I am not letting up. I am not stopping quoting these scriptures. I am not stopping thanking God for what I'm doing. I am not, th I'm not going to stop telling him that I'm so grateful that he's taking care of me and my family. And he's making me prosperous because I'm going to be diligent with what I'm doing. And during that time, praying about what I was supposed to be doing, Regina at one point said to me, do you think that you should get another job? And I said, I, I don't think so, but let me pray about it. And I was clear that I wasn't supposed to. I knew I wasn't supposed to. So 
you're not making enough money. Why wouldn't you go get another job? And anyone that knows us, they know that we're, we're struggling. Well, not many people, but the people that we shared stuff with. And we didn't share a lot of this with anyone. You know, it's hard to live in faith, right? When you're like, well, things are just so terrible. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Rich, do it. It's just so hard. It's a hard old way. It's Dr. Oh. Bell says. <laughs> It's a hard old way. No! We just thank God. God, I thank you. I thank you for taking care of me. I thank you for taking care of my family. Amen. And everyone and everyone say that, that knows what and they won't say it to me, but they'll say it to Regina. I don't know why he doesn't just get another job. Why doesn't he do something to take care of you guys? Why, 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 why? All this and you know the, the hearts are good. Well, I don't know, maybe not at once. <laughs> but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> You know, no one wants you to hurt, but they don't understand. God told me to do this. Amen. What, do you, what do you want me to say? And finally, there were, there were two or three times I broke down and said, God, I, I'll keep doing this, but I'm getting another job. And I'm telling you, I couldn't get a job at Walmart or Starbucks. I, I'm being dead serious. Father God, I thank you for taking care of me. I thank you that the Bible says. I thank you that the Bible says. God, I thank you that I have authority. I thank you for taking care of me and my family. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, God. I remember when Cameron came to live with us uh, like three years ago. He decided to come work with me one day. And we got in the car. And I said, I don't know if you remember this or not. We lived in the apartments over there. And I said to you, okay, we need to read these scriptures first. And I handed you your scripture card and said, you read them and I'll repeat them to you. And you're like, oh. Because <laughs> these, these cards take a long time to read. You know, we're going to Winston, and we didn't have enough time to finish the thing, so we drove around a little bit. It may not have been that bad, but he never came back to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do that every day. Every day, every day. I'm, I'm quoting the scriptures. This is getting inside me. I'm not letting this slip. I can't. Yeah. Did it look any better? It didn't look any better. I'm telling you, it didn't look any better. And we had weeks where we had victories. The way weeks were, they were, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I kept doing what I felt like God wanted me to do. Then we got, I got notification from someone, Regina knew someone, I think, that said that it was either FedEx or UPS was hiring holiday help. Extra, they had something like, I don't know, 50, 75 jobs or paying $25 an hour or something, some crazy number. And I was like, oh, that's mine, I'm taking that. I'm, I'm, that's mine. I'm taking that. I sent my little electronic, you know, application in with the hundreds of others that I had sent out. They never heard back, so I said to Regina, was it you or someone else? <coughs> no, it may have been someone else. But, I, yeah, no, it wasn't. I can't even remember who it was, but I called and said, um, hey, I haven't heard back from anything. You, you, I know that you know the guy that said that they were posting all these jobs. Is there anything I can do to get my name out there? Get in front of someone. Let me stand in front of someone and interview. You know, I, this electronic stuff, I can convince him to hire me, but I, I want to get in front of someone. Right. He called me back and said, Greg, there were 1,750 some odd applications for those 25 jobs. They were filled within 30 minutes. Oh my God. All right. Thank you, Father God. God, I think you just open up the book, keep quoting these scriptures. And during that time, one of our advertisers owned a furniture store, and he was doing some deal trying to sell furniture and get some furniture made for a distributor. And he said, hey, I know you used to do this. Would you be interested in working for points, getting back in furniture? And I said, yeah, you know, please. I'd love to do that. He said, I need help with merchandising. They wouldn't put this thing together. And I said, all right, so long story, Abridged. I know it's not short. That that deal fell through. It never it never came about. But in the interim, this spark on the inside of me was ignited to start a line of furniture. And I realized if I got someone with the financial backing, with what I know and who I know in the industry, we can do something. And so this guy agreed to, to do, do this with me. We're going to go to market a year ago, October. I had six groups of furniture I was going to build. And when it came time to place the order with the factory to get the samples made, I said to the, the guy who was my partner, going to be my partner, was real tentative. 
We hadn't signed an agreement yet. I said to him, I need to know if you're ready. Because I'm going to market in October. And I need you to write a check if you're in. And he said, well, I've got some issues, some stuff going on. What would you do if I, if I wasn't the one who did it? I said, I, I have no idea, but I'm going to market. See, this is what faith speaks. This isn't because I was so great. This isn't none of that stuff. It's because over and over, you keep filling yourself up. And I, the only thing I know is I'm going to market. I and mean, I felt like God spoke this to me. I mean, I, I'm going to, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it. My, if I have to put sofas on the back of a pickup truck and drive them around High Point, I'm going to market. Amen. I'll be there. And I don't have time to go into the whole story, but you, I, I, it would, some of the miracles that have happened, would, you, you'd be baffled. I'm baffled. I'm still so grateful. So he bails out, and he says, well, if you can find someone else, just let me know. I said, all right. There was one other guy that I'd become friendly with that we were selling advertising to. See how this is tying together? God had me selling advertising when I didn't want to sell advertising, when it looked like I should go get a job at Walmart. But in that interim, I met a guy. <laughs> God's so good. <laughs> And so I went to him and said, hey, this is my situation. I got a partner who may pull out, and this thing potentially could be huge. I mean, big huge. I mean, life-changing huge. But I don't have a customer. I don't have a PO. I don't have anything but an idea. And this is what I think. And I laid everything out, laid numbers out. And I said, but this is how much money I need to get this started. He said, when do you need it? I said, tomorrow. <laughs> and he said, send me, send me your spreadsheets. I'll give you a call tomorrow, Greg. Right? I said, all right, I appreciate it. So you know what I'm doing all night. But I got it. This is mine in Jesus' name. See, I knew the other guy was what was going to take me to market. And when he kind of bailed, your heart panics a little bit. You got you to settle it down. You got to say, no, 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 no. The devil's whispering in your ear because he's a liar. That's right. This isn't going to work. I knew you did. You, you should have known this wasn't going to work. How could this possibly work? You didn't have enough money to do this anyway. You're dreaming. So on when, or on something the Holy Ghost whispered in your ear, or just faith, right? You go to this guy. And he calls the next day and says, hey, you know what? I went to the numbers. I think this is a great idea. Did some research. See the guys you want to sell. Let's do this. Now, I don't think he had any idea when he agreed to that, what he was jumping into. Because God's hand is all over this. And this thing has, it's, it's turning into something that neither one of us could ever have imagined. And I'm so grateful to God. And hey, by the way, I'm not there yet. We still have, I'm, it's not like I've even broken even. I'm not saying, woohoo, I'm by the God. You know, it's nothing like that. <laughs> I'm going to buy pastor a new church. How about that? Woohoo. You know, God willing, someday I'm, I'd love to write, write a check that big to the church. Let's just, let's redo it. Thank you, Jesus. God, please, yes. Amen. But it's a process. It's all steps. Amen. Right. You, you have got whatever's in your heart. You listen for that. You listen for it. You take time to be quiet. You'll hear it. If it's there, God put it there. That's something that's, that, that's drawing and pulling you. It's a desire. God gives you, the book says, the desires of your heart. Those desires are there. He's put them there. It's not too late. I don't care where you are. It's not too late. You're going to fulfill this stuff, but you've got to act. you got to do something. you got to be diligent. you got to stop the devil every day. And you got to do the right things every day. And if you don't know what to do, do something. You, might, you, you need work on your relationships. You need work in your business. You need work on your job. I don't care. I don't care what it is. This stuff works for anything. Do something. We've got to step out and we've got to act because God will bless the work of your hands. And I understand it may not be tomorrow. And when we started this thing, I knew that I had two or three customers right off the bat that were going to, that were going to come on board and all my financial problems are going to be over. Yeah. And I got a handful of little guys that do a little bit of business and one guy that's like a decent size, but I'm still chasing the big guys. They're talking to us. They're talking to me. And every day I bind the devil. Every single day. I'm going to stand and fight this fight. The liar's not taking it. He's not, he's not taking it. God has put this in my heart. And I'm going to take it. 
And this is what God needs for us to do. He needs for someone to stand up. Now I get to read the story. Are you still with me? <laughs> and I love this story. All right, if you're taking notes or you have your Bible, turn to 2 Kings chapter 6, and we're going to read for a while. Every time I've ever heard this, this story preached, <laughs> how are we doing, Cam? All right. Every time I've heard this story preached, um, everyone always you know, does the abridged version because it's, it's a story. But we're going to read the whole thing tonight. I think it's important that we do. 2 Kings 6.24 Now it came about after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. There was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, and behold, they besieged it until, listen to this, a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver, and a fourth of a cab of dove's dung for five shekels of silver. I don't care how bad it is for you. I don't care how bad it is for you. The city was shut up! Nothing was coming in, and nothing was going out. You think your economy is bad? Theirs was non-existent. It was crushed. People are buying donkey heads in the city for 80 shekels of silver to eat the eyeballs and the brains and to make soup for a meal. You think you got it bad? Come on now. You think God can't do something? Listen to, what the, but listen to this story. And the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, and a woman cried out to him, saying, Help, my Lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord does not help you, from where shall I help you? From the threshing floor or the wine press? We don't have any wheat on the threshing floor, and we don't got any wine in the presses. We're broke. What do you want me to do? This is the government talking to you. This is when it's that bad that the government says, No, there are no more food stamps. There's no more welfare. There's no more wick or snap. It's all gone. It's gone. The schools are closed. We've got nothing. What do you want from me? And she answered and said, Hang on, sorry. This woman said to me, in verse 28, Give me your son that we may eat him today, and we'll eat my son tomorrow. So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give me your son, that we may eat him, but she has hidden her son. And when the king heard the words of the woman, he tore his clothes. And now he was passing by on the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth beneath on his body. And he said, May God do so to me and more, if the head of Elisha, the son of the shepherd, remains on him today. The king and Elisha had some issues. And I've been hungry before. Come on. What is your life like if you'll contemplate eating your kids to live? And you're thinking to yourself, that this life is no good for them anyway. This misery, this poverty, they'd be better off dead. I wish I were. And somehow it makes sense. It's the end of the end. It doesn't get any worse than this. Israel is at a time that they've never seen anything like this. And the king is incensed. He doesn't know what to do. His heart's breaking for his people. And he's got these issues with the prophet. And Elisha was sitting in his house, and the elders were sitting with him. And the king sent a man from his presence. But before the messenger came to, came to him, he, Elisha, said to the elders, Oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, this is Elisha. Said to the elders, Nothing like having a prophet in the room. You know, this God just revealed this to him. You see how this son of a murderer is sent to take away my head? I mean, there's no one here. He's just sitting with the elders. They're talking. Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold the door shut against him. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And they're sitting there like, huh? What? What are you talking about? And while he was still talking with them, behold, the messenger came down to him and he said, Behold, this evil is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? And Elisha said, Listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. And the royal officer, on whose the hand of the king was leaning, this is the king's right-hand man, this is the guy, this is the king's go-to guy, 
answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And then he said, Behold, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat it. And it seems like we're getting ready to tell a different story, but we're not. We're just segueing. This is the part of the story that we came from here for tonight. You ready? Now there were four lepers men at the entrance of the gate, and they said one unto another, Why do we sit here until we die? If we say we'll enter the city, then the famine in this is in the city, and we'll die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come and let us go over to the camp of the Armenians, and if they spare us, we'll live. And if they kill us, we'll but die. What is it? It doesn't matter what we do. We're going to die if we sit here. And if we go into the city where the famine is, we're going to die there in the city. Now we can go to the camp of the Arminians and we got a shot at them sparing us. I mean, they probably won't. We're probably going to die there. But we got a shot. And understand, this was a camp. Not like, don't think KOA campground camp. The city was shut up. These people were camped out. If it was going to take six months, a year, three years, they're starving everyone out of Samaria. So they had, they had a camp that was like a city set up. People brought stuff in to buy and sell, and there were stores. I mean, this, this, this is how I envision it. They had more stuff. They were living here. We say camp. Don't think campground. Think, like, compound. I mean, it's huge. Thousands and thousands of people living off the supplies in this camp. And they knew they were going to be there. If they had to be there years, they would be there years. Because it, it, if we stay here long enough, they're all going to starve in there. We'll go in and clean the bodies up. If they come in, if they open that door and come out, we're going to go in and kill them. But they're not stupid enough to open the door, so we're just going to sit here and wait. And they had supplies and supplies and supplies. So the lepers were going to go to the gates of the, the camp and say, excuse me, we're really hungry. And we got leprosy. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> Things are bad for us. Could you help us out? And so what did they do? Something. Yeah. They did something. In the face of death, they did something. And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Arminians. And when they came to the outskirts of the camp of the Arminians, behold, there was no one there. Thousands of people gone. For the Lord, in verse 6, had caused the army of the Arminians to hear a sound of chariots and of horses, even the sound of a great army. So that they said one to another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. This noise was so great, they didn't think it was just the, the army of the Hittites. They thought it was the army of the Hittites and the Egyptians. Thousands of chariots and horses coming down upon them. And it was so loud, they thought it was so close that they took off immediately. They didn't even load their horses. They took off running for their lives. See how God will bless the work of your hands? Do something. Do so. Turn to someone and say, I want to do something. Me too. And therefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp just as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent. And what else were they going to do? They ate and drank and carried from their silver and gold and clothes. And they went and hid them, and then they returned and entered another tent and carried from there also. And went and hid them. These guys are like, where is everyone? <laughs> Everyone's gone. And they go into the tent, they're like, this is the mess hall. Yeah. You smell that? That's food that's cooking. <laughs> it's, 
still it's cooking right now. Let's eat something. And they're starving, and they, they start gorging themselves, and they're eating this food and stuff in their pockets full of silver and gold and all this stuff, and picking up clothes. They're lepers. Who knows how long they're going to last, but they're going to look good. <laughs> the stuff in their pockets. And one of them has enough sense to say, oh, wait a second. This didn't happen just for us. Uh-huh. Now, see, this is a whole other sermon. We're not going to do it. But God will bless, and it's not going to be just for you alone. Yeah. Yeah. And they said, they had enough sense to say, wait a second, we need to hold up here. We're not doing right in verse 9. This day is a day of good news, but we're keeping it silent. If we wait until morning light, punishment will overtake us. Because something about having a healthy fear of the Lord, too. Mm-hmm. Again, another sermon. There's just so much here. Now therefore, come and let us go and tell the king's household. So they came and called to the gatekeepers of the city. And they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Arminians, and behold, there was no one there. Not the voice of a man, only horses tied and donkeys tied, and all the tents, just as they were. And the gatekeepers called and told within the king's household. And the king arose in the night and said to his servants, I'll now tell you what the Arminians have done to us. They know that we're hungry, and therefore they've gone from the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we'll capture them alive and get into the city. Always be careful. Now listen, always be careful that when God shows up, you recognize that it's God. Because it may not look like God. And this king, is a, he, he's a warrior. He thinks like a warrior. He thinks with his natural mind. And they said, there's no one in the camp. And he said, uh-huh, yeah. I know what that's all about. That's called ambush. I'm not playing into that. We're not doing it. We're not going out. They're going to come in and overtake us. We're not, we're not doing it. In verse 13, one of his servants said, uh, Please, let some men take five of the horses which remain. This is how bad it was. Let them take five of the horses that remain. There are many that remain. But let them take five of the horses that remain which are left in the city. And behold, they'll be, they'll be in any case like all the multitude of Israel who are left in the city. Behold, they'll be in any case like all the multitude of Israel who have already perished. So let us send out and see. They took, therefore, two chariots with horses, and the king sent after them the army of the Armenians, saying, Go and see. He said, You're right. That makes sense. Might as well go check it out. I'm only losing five horses and a few men. And verse 15 says, And they went after them to the Jordan, and behold, all the way was full of clothes and equipment which the Armenians had thrown away in their haste. You know, and this is the, I'm thinking these are the goodies, too. Because when they were leaving the camp, they're like, just grab the important stuff and go! And they got all their, getting as much stuff as they can, and they're fleeing and running for their lives, and this noise in their ears is so loud, they're like, forget it! Throwing all this stuff away, just running down the road. Jumping on horses, just getting out of there any way they can. And all, the road is filled with all this wonderful stuff. And then the messengers returned and told the king, so the people went out and plundered the camp of the Arminians. And then, the next day, remember, a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it looks like today. I don't care what it looks like today. Do not sell your God short. He's seen worse. Now the king appointed the royal officer on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate, but the people trampled on him at the gate, and he died, just as the man of God said, who spoke when the king came down to him. It happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel will be sold tomorrow, about this time at the gate of Samaria. Then the royal officer answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, remember him saying this? Could such a thing be? Behold, you'll see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat of it. And so it happened to him. For the people trampled on him at the gate, and he died. Closing here, there are three things I want to take away from this story. First of all, 
as we were told in, in, over and over in the book of Proverbs, we have to be diligent. We have to do. We have to act. And that's exactly what these men did. They acted. They did. So I don't care what your situation is, and not just today, any day, going forward, you're facing some stuff. It doesn't matter what it is. Act. Do. Move. Do something. Put your hand to something so God can bless it. Yeah. Sitting around just praying that God change the circumstances is not enough. You do that. You keep doing that. You keep quoting your scriptures. You keep believing. But you need to do. You need to be diligent. And you keep fighting the devil. You do. You act. We've got to do and act and move. God expects us to. And he expects increase from us. We've got to do this. We've got to act. The second thing is we need to recognize when God shows up. Because if, if that king hadn't recognized that this was God, he would have stayed with those doors to that city closed, and they would have died of starvation in that city with everything available to them. God's going to show up, and it may not look like God. You get quiet. You trust God. And you step out. And sometimes that job you're working that seems like it's just, this is the biggest mistake I've ever made. God's doing something. He's putting you right where you need to be, right where you want to be, right where he wants you to be. Because he wants to bring the, the, the desires of your heart to pass, and he's going to. Amen. And lastly, like this, like the, 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 the royal servant of the king, do not give voice to death. And I know we read the story, and it's easy to look at this guy like, oh, well, he got what he deserved, because he said in a despising voice, or at least the way I, I presented it, it was a despising voice. If God had windows in heaven, you think he could do this? Sorry, that's better. But before you before you judge him, come on now, be honest, church. How we, we may not say it and say it like that, but how often do we think that? Come on, look at the situation. My brother-in-law. His father just passed away this last year uh, to cancer. And late, late, late in his life, he got a hold of the word of faith. And he started, you know, quoting scriptures and believing God. And he died of cancer. And I remember my brother-in-law said to me, when my sister was talking about going to a different church, maybe the Baptist church down the road because they've got a great children's ministry, and that's where my brother-in-law's father went to church. My brother-in-law said, uh -uh, we'll never do it. She said, why not? He said, we'll never know. But I have to wonder, if we had been sitting in a church for the past 15 years, where he was hearing the word and his faith was being built, he was learning, being taught how to use his faith, would he still be alive today? Because it takes a while to build your faith. I, it's work and it takes a long time. This, these suddenlies that happen, <laughs> it takes a law in my mind. I mean, you know, we hear stories, and I know I've said this before, and suddenly my whole financial situation turned around. I'm, I'm thrilled for you. Praise Jesus. Never once has happened to me like that. I've never had a suddenly where it's been, it's been months of preparation and years of preparation to have a suddenly happen. That's my, that's me. I don't, this is not chapter and verse, you understand. This is, and I know God can do anything, and stuff like that does happen. I've heard stories. I know where there have been mighty miracles, and, but you know what? Nothing beats just believing God and building your faith. But you're not going to build your faith in, in three days to, to, to ward off cancer. Amen. You're not going you're, you're to do it. Amen. Some of this stuff has to be lived out. You have to prove it to yourself. You have to test it out. you got to do it. That actually wasn't part of any story that I wanted to tell. Give me just a second. We may close it down and I may say one more thing. I remember. <laughs> That's pastor's anointing. Where was I? <laughs> 
One day, Regina was talking to uh, maybe one of her friends or someone, I don't know who, and she was sharing this story. We're believing in God, and her brother-in-law's father has cancer, and we're just believing in God for a miracle. And the response she got from the other person was, well, the doctor already said he's only got a couple days to live. So before you start judging this guy who's lived in this poverty for this long and seen this death and destruction all around him, and he's so despondent, and he, he wants God to move, but at this point, it's over. It's over. It's over. If God had windows of heaven, would he do this? Could he do this? Please. So let's not judge him too harshly. What did he not do? He wasn't diligent in doing the things he needed to do to keep his faith built up. He wasn't spending enough time with the prophet who said, Thus says the word of the Lord, tomorrow at this time. You spend enough time with God and you hear someone say, It's turning around. And it's going to turn around now. You say, all right. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. So that's what I want us to take away tonight. Be encouraged. Stay diligent. Stay diligent. Do something. Act. And do not voice the doubt that's, that will come to your head. The devil will plant all kinds of stuff. Don't give it voice. Do not give it voice. It'll take seed. Or it'll take root. Sorry. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that, that it, 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 it draws us closer to you. God, I thank you that your word is anointed, that it, it shines light in areas of our life that need to be changed. And God, I just pray right now that everyone that's heard this message, that they're encouraged, that you're going to do in their lives what you put in their hearts, and that they're going to do the things that they need to do to bring it to pass. And I thank you for blessing the work of our hands. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.